How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! Hello everyone! Welcome to Games Day! I'm playing this crap again. Uh, it's so much fun. Um, oh, excuse me, I just burped into the mic like a piggy piggy piggy. Um, I've had a lot of sugar to prepare myself for this because I don't know how else to play this game. After much deliberation, and a lot of calls with friends, and a lot of just rolling the dice, I've finally decided who I'm going to fuck. Um, <laughs> and that is none other than Kyo... Hito... Kyo... Coyote. Kyo Hito. Oh god, oh my god, we're in for a roller coaster. There's so much garbage to, like, do here. All right, let's dig in. As part, as part of a special feature in a magazine, the gorgeous model Coyote is going to make you over. He's abrasive and sharp-tongued, but he's transformed you into a beautiful woman. Your confet dance right, Tyrants. Sorry. <laughs> he comes to you one yeah he does one night, causing very emotions to reignite inside you. Why am I reading this like I can't read? But who cares if we're the best guy, aren't you? Okay, well, spoilers. Oh my god, there was so fucking many. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Oh god, are they like decisions I have to make that matter? Episode 1. <laughs> I awaken to a soft, soothing sensation. I've wet myself. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, do you see the city backdrop is literally just pasted onto the windows? Like, I don't know if that's intentional, <laughs> if it's supposed to be a sticker and I'm just in, like, some cold room and, like, there is no view. <laughs> Sorry. Thin, beautiful fingers seem to play in my hair as they gently untangle its strands. What? Remember when we last left her, they just said you're hired. So, I don't know what's going on now. This feels amazing. Glancing up to peer through those delicate fingers, I glimpse silver hair. Below that, lightly colored eyes catch my gaze, captivating me. Give me back my gaze! No. Oh! Coyote! Coyote is the one who's been touching my hair, and he's the one who ate my baby! Hey! Space Bill, Bermit! When I try to sit up, he stops me, pushing me back down onto the sofa. I'm on a sofa? Take my word for it! With a low noise dryer in one hand, his tantalizing fingers find their way back to my hair. It wasn't that hard, I left a forwarding address. Jimmy! Beast bullets and body and hair sprout. Oh, she fell in the pool. Oh, and it kind of like leaves you to decide who's going to save her. The other guys just watch. That's cool. Uh, that's fine. Wow, coyotes can swim. Thank you. Bird of advice. Coyote continues his tone indifferent. Oh, no. Coyote continues his tone indifferent. If you can't spin me really for good pulling into pools. Well, that's fucking solid advice. Thank you, but I fell in. I didn't jump in. Idiot. Sure, but it's not as if I fell because I wanted to. No one falls because they wanted to. Me? But yeah, I hear you. I'll be more careful or whatever. It's not as if I have a history of falling into pools or something. I just suck at it. Our conversation stalls. I farted. The muted sound of the hairdryer is the only noise in the room. Despite his indifferent tone and haughty advice, Coyote's touch is gentle. His claw grasps at me. When was the last time someone touched my hair like this? One year ago? Two? Last week when I was at this fucking party? I can't even remember. Lighter than air? My hair flutters on the wind crea created by the hair dryer. The sensation of gentle male fingers combing through my hair puts me at ease. I don't know why he doesn't use a comb. I feel like I could fall asleep again. A blush of warmth returns to my frozen heart, hardened over after the divorce. Okay. 
fucking let's ugh. for the first time in forever I tranquilly close my eyes because he's tranquilized me Modestly, how the grip can you get fuck you and then he hit me what now what are you talking about Jesus she's already lost patience that's my job Blinders, blindness, breakage, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. There's black with my hair, just the damage of hair. I gotta like loosen up my cheeks to fucking do this guy. Wait, hold on. That sounded. Uh... Judgmental much? Fuck you! And I cut his nose. I sit up in a flash, reflexively moving away from Kiona's hands. Don't touch me, you judgmental hussy. Whatever warmth has been burgeoning within me is now getting colder by the second. Look, I've been a little preoccupied lately. I haven't been able to concentrate on my hair. Besides, it's not like I even have the money to spend on superficial stuff like that now. Oh, you wouldn't be able to hear that at all, my god. That My mic just did not pick that up. I don't have the time to go to a salon for a deep conditioning treatment or whatever. Man. Man. As I search for my next words, cold eyes, devoid of any emotion, palm sweaty, mom spaghetti, regard me dispassionately. loser. You're looking at him. Blame giving excuses to explain why you can't do things. But these are genuine excuses. Like, she doesn't have the money and she's been through some shit. Blame Blender doesn't bring my loser to the environment. Blame Blender doesn't think about what they can do. I hope this voice comes through, like, legibly at all. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to redo this fucking episode. <clears throat> we are the permit. Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, uh, I don't know. Wait, what? Wait, uh, how do I pick? Oh. Uh, we can't split. Oh, wait. You can't split people. Uh, maybe this one, because it's like the less confrontational and it's like at least starting a conversation. Whether this husk of a man will actually follow up on it, I don't know. Maybe this was the wrong decision, but I'm sticking with it. I wasn't. I wasn't like this before. Fine, you're right, maybe I am a loser right now, at this particular moment. But before I got married, I did everything I could to fix things. Now you're trying to convince me you used to be a winner. This guy's rude. This is what I wanted out of this game. <laughs> but you have been treated badly, Brittany. This, it's just no pleasing this guy. Oh, do your hair, I can't, I've been through a divorce. Yeah, it sucks to be a divorce, you fucking suck. I was like, this guy's... <laughs> Such a dick. He says spitting heartless words at me while peering deep into my eyes. Every word out of his mouth is super depressing. Yeah, I'd say. Blenny, oh, Blenny Blay, getting back to the breeze that you're here. Why is it that you both just want to burk as a house bleeper? Well, because you guys seem shady and I assume the job is too. Mmm. Mm, mm, don't knock it till you try it, sweetie. I pause, though hesitant to call the man who saved my life a criminal. <laughs> Why would you call him a criminal? We got the best. Then now you try to make you a to rely on. Yep, that's about it. Thanks for bringing that up. From that blood, you guys will have to take care of me. I, I, I can't hear you anymore. Brand you need money. Yeah, of course, I heard money. I know all that. Brand you must know what you need to do. Brand you need to find work here where you can. Brand some part and blood, right? Mm. Duh. Duh. Brand you need to find work here where you can. Brand you need to find work here where you can. What the hell is my mouth doing to me? <laughs> okay, hold on, I'm loosening up my jowls, because I think that's how that's the key to go back to the droopy voice. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get this part out. Faced with this apathetical delivered, apathetically delivered yet solid argument, my heart wrenches. By the way, you should get the wrench out of your heart. The salary is five thousand dollars a month. I 
think that's a lot. I don't really know my exchange rate as much as I should to dollars from rands, but that sounds pretty dang good. Excuse me? Okay. Nine thousand, a five thousand dollars a month to be a housekeeper? How naked do I have to be? Convinced I've misheard him, my head snaps up. Do the math. How many mouths will you have to work in ten hours a mouth to get paid by the fat of fat dollars? What? Five hundred hours. Brad, if we divide that by thirty days? Sixteen point six 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 nine. Then on the birds, you'd have to work nearly seventeen hours a day in breaths without days off. But I mean, I suppose you could do that if we were trying to make it up the breath. But... Coyote looks away as if giving me the finger. Time to think. He's right. I'd never be able to make $5,000 a month with a normal job. And no one can work 17 hours a day, every day. I probably don't have the luxury of being wary of this guy and his shady friends and his fucking asshole face. I've got to figure out a way to support myself and survive. But I'll do it. Don't be upset me. I'll be your housekeeper. Coyote's gaze quietly returns to me and he howls to the moon. I think you made the best choice. Well, I'll come with me after you can broom. Coyote leads me upstairs into a large closet connected to a clean, attractive room. Be afraid of you for never clothes, not blacks, you black. Why do you have a bunch of women clothes? It's the only way I feel whole. Are you sure the stuff looks like a Costa Fortune? There's a ton of dresses and bags stored in a comparatively small space. The labels I see all bear the names of recognizable designers like No Name Brand. I can tell the fabric is high quality just from touching it. <gasps> Cotton. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, though. Supermodels, they're not just like us. This closet is like a fashion dream come true. Why do you have so many women's things, too? Precisely, I, I do some design work in addition to modeling. Oh, that's what you're calling it. Creep. Plus, my agency has been dealing with more premium models lately. The feminists are taking over, so we get a lot of samples. Your agency? Like a s secret agency? Well, I founded my own modeling agency a few years ago. A few years back. He, he's not... He's not just a model. He's also a designer and the president of his own modeling agency. There are so many options. I'd never know what to wear. Ooh la la. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as difficult as in making it seem. The instant Coyote's eyes leave me, he begins picking out a number of outfits and also picking at a carcass of a deer. Like this and bliss and this and this and bliss and this and this and bliss. Even you should be able to pull this off. Jesus, okay. Even me? Thanks. What a cute dress! It's living! Wait a sec, excuse you! What is that even you part about? Okay, she actually like calls people out on her bullshit. The other ones would just be like, oh, he noticed me. Don't just wear this bearing into space. Come with me. Thank you. Okay. We leave the closet. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we leave the closet and walk back into the attractive neat room before. You'll be able to see all sorts of semen stains in this room. You'll be living here from now on forever until you die. Really? But this room is so nice. Would you prefer I shut... Would you prefer I shut me in the closet? Hey! It'll... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna. Oh shit! Martin, I'm going to stand in the yard. Do you think my hair is bad now? That's... I don't get what that's all about. You're really gonna hate it after I've been living in a shed. Bah, bah, bah. I'm funny. This is actually happening. It isn't a dream. The chandelier above my head sparkles. Boop. 
It starts singing, be our guest. Sunlight? What the fuck, sunlight? Hello? Look outside. What? Anywho, everything in the room is tasteful and understated and understated and tasteful. Like something one might find in a luxury hotel. I get to work, the music gets all chipper. I get to work the very next day, enthusiastically throwing myself into the, my housekeeping duties and throwing myself against the wall. Boom. Coyote isn't home. He left early this morning for a photo shoot. Time to look at his panties! Laundry, check! Cleaning, check! Okay, perfect. I'm putting the vacuum away in the closet. When I'm suddenly reminded of something that happened last night. Oh god. Why didn't they just cut to this normally? Why didn't this just continue? Yeah, we spot the most cleaning, loads of crapping, and a little something extra, and handy jays. A, a little something extra. Handy jays. Go explain where the tab comes. You are the closer one. Also, you won't need to do any cooking. Got it. One more thing, but then they want me to do cooking. I don't know. You're not allowed into my bedroom. I'm going into this bedroom. What about to clean it? You don't need to. I just sleep in a corner. I just roll myself up and cry all night. We have left the blur just in case. Paranoid much? You already told me your room is off limits. There's no reason to lock the door too. I guess he just doesn't trust me. I can lock I can pick the lock. Well, I think I'll do the grocery shopping next. This is such an interesting episode. Where's that shopping list he left? Oh here we Ah oh, here we got it. I checked to make sure the grocery list Coyote left me is still in my pocket. On my way to the store, I'm hit by a bus that's over the end. I'm waiting at a stoplight to cross a large intersection when I hear some girls start to squeal with the light. <laughs> Chaka, not Kyoto Shirakurai, right? Actually, it's pronounced Coyote. Good God, he is so hot. Have you ever seen Danny Phantom? Hmm? I'm gonna take a quick, quick, quick. Uh, I'd kill for a boyfriend like Coyote. I follow the girl's lines of sight to an ad plastered on the side of a building. Woo! It's an ad for a well-known luxury brand. Body twisted elegantly into a high fashion pose. Coyote's expression is appropriately melancholic as he gazes down at the world below. <sighs> the look of it- I'm not reading that. I don't know why I'm just gonna skip that one. I think this is the first time I've ever, see, I've ever looked at a man and thought, pretty. But you've seen him, I've seen him in person. He's got a great face, but his body is beautiful too, I guess. Talk about hitting the genetic lottery. Take a picture of me and Coyote, even though he's not real. This is pathetic. Fight like Charles. Charles. Man, he really is a supermodel. Da -da 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 -da. Who's that in the sky? It's his billboard. It's so bizarre that I'm that guy's housekeeper. That still doesn't feel real. Well, you won't be if you keep fucking just not going shopping. Okay, uh, the next day I'm ironing a shirt. Oh, this is so fucking interesting. When I suddenly find myself the target of Coyote's piercing gaze. My gays have swords. Attack her, girl. They should have iron around the buttons too. Already on it, boss. Hey, they're in front of me. You'll have to read blood if you leave a single wrinkle. Jesus Christ, this guy. Yeesh, okay. What a hard ass. <laughs> Come clean up here when you're done with that. Is she like his son? He says gesturing with his chin for me to walk over where he is. Although I'm nervous, he'll be critical of my ironing job. I managed to finish up with the shirt. Okay, it's Burfi. I'm done ironing! Once I'm sitting down on the sofa, I'm handed some meticulously folded clothes. Make these. What? Change into bread. Oh, this guy's weird. I head into the bathroom and start changing clothes. What a cool dress. It's freezing my nipples. But what's he having me put this on for? <laughs> I can't tie the string at the day! <laughs> Just then, I hear a voice from the other side of the door. Feed us. 
What are you doing? You're taking forever. This guy is such a fucking prick. I dressed myself as a big, like a big girl, as best I could, but we've got a little problem on our hands. I made a poopy in panties. I'm probably good. Oh, you're allowed to come into my room. There's click. There's click. Just the one, and the door opens. Click forgiving eyes look me over as I press the dress to my chest to keep it from falling down. What are you doing? I can't tie the fucking string around the fucking neck! But I don't bet you. Kyoto circles around behind me. But are you seriously kidding me? You can't even do something that simple. This guy is... This guy is worse than the ex. Okay, maybe not really, but I mean, give it time. Well, excuse me for not having eyes in the back of my head! You don't have eyes in the back of your head, blind do you? Can you play your tip great? Fuck. Cool fingertips grace my neck, and a shiver runs through my body. Heat seems to gather in the places he touches. The capricious, delicate movements of his hand are enough to make my heart leap. Why do you feel like I can't breathe? Yes, okay, we're, we're finally into the typos. Do your job, lungs. I try closing my eyes to shut out the sensations. But my whole consciousness is strangely focused on the back of my neck. Probably because there's a creep behind you. Ben. Thanks. Have a seat in the toilet. I want to watch you pee. He sits down in front of a large mirror. So, what exactly are we doing? Is it finger puppets? Let's sit still. Coyote says, speaking to me through the mirror. What the f Oh, right. After working some wax through my hair, he begins to wax my finger, create finger curls at the end. He gradually pulls the hair, framing my face outwards, creating texture and volume. But he's making the same face he was making in that ad I saw yesterday. His eyes seem at once vaguely disinterested and also intensely focused on a certain point. Checking me in the mirror again and again and again and again for hours he does this. He fixes my hair with impressive skill. Mixed makeup. Jesus Christ, this guy. Coyote reaches for an expensive looking color. Blah, 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 I'm, um, I'm tongue tied. His movements are smooth and sure. As he applies my foundation and does my brows. Why don't we end like sentences in the same text box? I don't get it. Can they not be more than a line long? Why are you doing my hair and makeup? For the sacrifice, of course. Because sometimes you have to do your own makeup before an appearance of fantasy. What? That kind of thing is fucking impressionist. Wow, this guy's seriously multi-talented and an idiot. Look at the brain and rip this brain with your eyes, but don't move your face. Like the hills? Yep. Yep. Uh, oh, oh, this makes me so uncomfortable. I don't like how they do this. His face draws really close, and his sure steady hand lines my eye. I misread that. I accidentally make eye contact with him at his at this new proximity, and my pulse quickens. I'm like dick height. When I reflexively try to look upwards, his finger catch my chin, tilting my head upwards. Don't move. Sorry. I'm not used to having my makeup done by another person. The eyeliner is followed by eyeshadow and mascara. Oh, we really gotta detail everything. Once everything is complete, Coyote circles around in front of me. Uh, this means he's gonna attack. <laughs> Lifting my chin in his hand again and applying lippy sticky with a brushy. May I put your mouth a little, like this. Okay. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to be looking at right now? He's too close! Oh, we're gonna die! I don't wanna... I don't... I, 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 I. Wow, my brain is not working today. He's too close! I don't want to let my eyes focus on what is in front of me, his penis. My eyes are still wandering around the room when the brush leaves my fingers. When it leaves my lips. What the hell is wrong with me? Now take a look at the makeup yourself. Okay, I did. Now I... My eyes go white when I see my reflection in the mirror. 
The makeup isn't quite as dramatic as what I wore for Taki's birthday party, but... I absolutely adore the feminine look Coyote has masterfully created. Well, I suppose that's the best I can do for now. I didn't know I could change this dramatically. I, even though I already came to this revelation in the party. Ah, fuck. I don't know, do I like... Mm, I don't know. It's this one or this one. I don't care about this one. Ugh, do I have to get a walkthrough for this stupid goddamn game so I don't have to replay the stupid goddamn game? Uh, you're a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker, Coyote! There's no need to state the obvious. Well then, fuck you! And you're so humble too! No, he's not! He's not- Oh, is that- I hope that's sarcastic. Hilarious, but right now you need to worry about complimenting me. You don't need to worry about complimenting me. Why don't you plan on taking a closer look at yourself with your good qualities? Okay, where's this good message coming from? This game confused me. We don't really have any. Okay, well there it comes. Like, I don't know what to do. Oh, thing. This guy's an asshole. Oops! I accidentally make eye contact with Coyote in the mirror. And speaking in a monotonous tone, he declares, You are now made of stone. We're going out. I've never been in such a fancy car before. Much less one driven by a chauffeur. Rich people are too much. Fuck them, I hate them. Sitting beside me in the back seat, Coyote gazes out the window at the passing scenery. So are you gonna tell me where we're going? The murder house. You have a job to do. There's something extra I mentioned before. I'm gonna have to model. It's finally time for me to begin the mysterious last part of my new job. If this is work, should I really be dressed up like this? What is he gonna make me do? Although I gaze at Keo um, Coyote's face and profile for a clue, his expressionless visage reveals nothing. This is a good place to wrap up the episode, maybe. If you like this, I don't know why you would. Um, because... I don't know, I, I was expecting this to pick up a little more, but I actually don't know why I thought that. So, yeah, I will... I'm definitely gonna, I don't care if no one watches these by the end of it, I'm doing this. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, please like and subscribe, please do that, please watch it, I have little else to live for. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're enjoying, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. I hope we get romantic soon. Okay. I can't tie the string at the day! <laughs>